Well, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna direct to example number six point two before we kind of try to solve the system. So we'll come back. But first, example 6.2 on page 198 is a very similar, but actually is simpler, simply because Now you tell me, do I write u squared of t or u of t squared? That could have great implications, right? Um, let's take a equals 1. So it's, it's the same system. It's the same uh, control system, but the objective is just slightly simpler. There's no x squared plus u squared. Okay? You do the whole thing, uh, so we can we can do it. I mean, I can let you do it. We can do it together. You can tell me what to write. <coughs> What's the Hamiltonian? Now, let me start to kind of slowly introduce what are the ver what is what will always appear in the Hamiltonian. Well, the Hamiltonian will always have p. Okay, P always comes linear in the Hamiltonian. We'll also have X. X goes through that right hand side and the and the functional and and the functional and U. Okay. It may have T through the uh, um, dependence, like if you have T explicitly here and if you have T explicitly here. Okay, but I can almost tell you we'll never have that explicitly. So let's just keep it like this. Uh, it's going to be what? So it's going to be u squared plus x plus u. Okay? That's just going to simplify. We had an x, x square before that kind of differentiated was left with an x, but here it's like this is minus p, huh? So p prime minus p. I mean that's that's a differential equation that I hope you can solve. And again, p at one is I, I didn't mention what is subject to an x of zero is. One, so that's a really simple, I mean, simplified situation. That's the optimal control problem. Okay. We have an initial condition uh, for x, no terminal condition for x. So we're not driving the system. The objective is not to drive to a certain state in a certain time. The only thing is to drive it so that this is minimized. Okay. So then we have p of zero equals p of one equals zero, and p prime equals minus p. Okay, how do we solve this? There's no u, so we can do this sort of before we minimize h with respect to u. Those two tasks are now independent. You can. You can now answer the questions, what is that shadow variable? Well, that's the solution to this is the, sh is the variable that goes into the, into the, into the, into the Hamiltonian. What is it? Solution? Yeah. Uh, no. No. Somebody else, I'm sorry. Somebody else that had uh, differential equations 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. E to negative t. Constant e to negative t. Yep. 
And of course, P of 1 equals 0, we'll say what C is. C e to the negative 1 has to be. No, uh, P of 1 equals 0 is, so the optimization is from 0 to 1, so there's a time interval. And we have initial condition on x, but we don't have terminal condition on x. So we have to impose terminal condition on P. So C to the minus 1 is 0, so C is E. So it means P of T is E, E to the minus T, which is E to the 1 minus T. Okay, so P of T is e to the 1 minus T. That's it. That basically says at each time T, that's how much P is. Okay. Now, once we've clarified what our shadow variable is, now we have to minimize H with respect to Oh yeah, I made a mistake, huh? Oh. So don't we have to have C zero? C zero, yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. It was even easier than huh? C zero, P zero. So, what's the partial of h with respect to u? Again, this can be done independent. So, it's 2u plus p, right? And that's equal to 0. Implies u is minus p over 2. Well, it's just 0, right? So, Yeah, I'm okay. What I meant was was to put a terminal condition, so it's not trivial. But um, yeah, so basically the answer to this one would then be apply no control. You're going to get least in at least uh, uh, minimum value of that inter of that uh, objective. Okay, and the thing is going to be like. And then x is going to be like e to the right. So once you figure out what what u star is, then x star must satisfy x prime equals x plus zero. Right? X x of zero is one, and that's x of t x star of t equals e to the t. Right? That's optimal. Um, solution or path. Uh, this is optimal control and the optimal value will be I at U star. So that's zero, right? Okay, so that was Super easy. Um, now, I guess the next question would be how can you do um, with a terminal condition? X of 1 equals something, right? Then you have no condition on P, so you have a, yeah, so that's what I really meant to. Okay, well, since I, I did it this way, let me just point, I mean, if, if in addition we had x of 1 equals 0, then the adjoint system, in this case it's just, there will be no, no, no condition on p. And you could have to solve this with general. So how do you solve this? p of t is c to the minus t. Okay.
Now what do you do? That's all you know about P. You don't know any more specific. What is the constant P? Right? So how do you kind of trace back to identify the constant? Well, before you get to X uh, system, you have to say what U is. Well, U, what was that? 2U plus P? No. Yes, no, yes. 2U plus P, right? You set this equal to 0, so you say U star is minus P over 2, so that's minus C over 2E to the minus T. Okay? We still don't know what the constant is, but we know the optimal control is of this form. Okay? Next, the x. x prime is x of t plus u of t. Well, where u is this u star, so it's x of t minus c over 2 e to the minus t. We don't know what c is, but we know what? We know that x of 0 has to be 1 and x of 1 has to be 0. Okay? How do we solve this differential equation? It's so linear, first order, and non-homogeneous. So you're saying find a particular. How do you find a particular one? I think for first order, it's even for first order, it's just the integrating factor, right? Let me remember, let me remind you this. If I have a, a, an equation like this, which is of that type, right, but x is on the other side, right? So this is a linear first order in x. That's the first thing you learn in the DFQ, so you've got to remember that. Um, you multiply by a factor, both left and right, with what purpose? with the purpose that, so that's called a mu, with the purpose that it becomes, the left side becomes a perfect derivative. So, I mean, what's the perfect derivative? Mu has to be e to the integral of p. Okay? Why is that? Because what's the derivative of mu prime? It's e to the integral of p, that's mu, times the derivative of the, top of, the, of the exponent, which is p, right? So basically, you have x mu prime is x prime mu plus x mu prime. So it's x prime mu plus x mu p. So you can see it's x prime plus x p or px times mu. So that's with that mu, if you hit the left side of the differential equation, then you get exactly the derivative of x mu, and then you integrate. How do you go from here? You can integrate both sides. You're going to get x mu is the integral of this, right? So let's apply that in our example. x prime minus x is minus c over 2e to the minus t. Okay, what's the integrating factor again now? It's e to the integral of the coefficient of x, minus 1. So it's e to negative t, right? 
So this will always give you e to the x times that integrating factor differentiated equals, and again, you can convince yourself, product rule there, you'll get exactly what you, e minus c over 2, e to the minus 2t. Okay? So this implies, once you integrate, that you get, what, c over 4, e to the negative 2t, you integrate, you integrate the right-hand side. Is that right? So it means, oh, plus d, plus a, a constant of integration. So x of t is, or x, you know, just leave, leave t out, x is e to the t times c over 4 e to the minus 2 t plus d. So it is c over 4 e to the minus t plus d e to the t. And now I have not one, but two constants that I have to find. But we have two initial, two conditions. Okay? So that will allow you to find both C and D. So that means, you want to do that? Sure, why not? We have all the time in the world. Um, C over 4 plus D is 1. And c over 4 e plus d e equals. Thanks, God, I didn't pick e as a constant, as the name of the constant. So I have d equals minus c over 4 e squared. And I have c over 4 minus c over 4 e squared equals 1 c equals 1 over 4 over 1 minus 1 over e squared. So it's 4 e squared over e squared minus 1. Whatever that is, okay? <coughs> Let's see. So what, what did that give us? They gave us the p back plug it back get p I wasn't very interesting it gave us it gave us u star what is u star minus c over 2 e to the negative t right and it gave us x star which is above there Okay. Really good idea again a plot once you're done to see if it makes any sense. So um, looks like a negative control. That just happens to be like well, yeah. No, yeah, okay, yeah. C is positive, right? So it looks like um Goes like this, huh? One zero. U star, right? And the corresponding x. X looks like a um, combination of e two t to negative t. That's some sort of a cosine hyperbolic or sine hyperbolic, right? And of course, use a calculator to kind of plot it very nicely, but uh, u of 1, e of 0 is 1, u of 1 is 0, right? And it looks like, I don't know how it looks, like this, I don't know, right? Okay, and the uh, last thing is, we've figured this uh, functions out. It's coming from that machinery. How do you know this is the optimal? Minimum. How do we know that this x, I mean that this u that we now decided on, which determines this x, 
to drive the system from 1 to 0, which makes it admissible, right? Makes the integral of u squared minimum. Certainly, it's not going to be 0. That minimum is not going to be 0. So the optimal value of the problem will be the, this u squared integrated, right? How do we know it's the minimum? Well, that has to do again with convexity. And this u star is indeed optimal. That is, it, it is a minimizer for the since I is, well, let me put it this way, F of T, X of T, U of T is convex in X and U. Um, I mean, it's strictly convex because u is just u squared, right? So it's strictly convex. Um, what does this convexity in u kind of propagate in saying the functional itself is convex? Okay. Um, you make a linear com a convex combination of u. That translates into a convex combination of x because the system was linear. The, the, the differential system was, was linear. And that in, this makes the whole um, integral, in, uh, the whole functional i of u to be convex, right? And then we know that, strictly convex, then we know that if there is, then we know that there is a minimum, right? And, and uh, we also have a candidate for that minimum. So, so that, that's a minimum. In general, actually, it's, it's a little more complicated, and I'll just refer to this uh, computation that's in the book here. So C theorem 6.4 for the general, general case. And there's, there's a kind of a non-trivial com uh, computation that shows um, that if you have a solution of this, of this, this principle satisfies that, um, then that's, that is actually a minimum under, under conditions that f is convex, for instance. OK. Let's see. Um, Somebody asked me about example 6.3 here. Let's just see what the differences are. The state equation is second order in x. Okay, so that kind of prompts. If you want to put it in this framework, you want to you want to write it as a first order in x but now you're going to have to have a system. So that's how you convert it. And by the way, this x double prime equals u is, comes, is very, very, uh, uh, appears a lot in optimal control problems because x is usually a position and this would be sort of the acceleration that you control. And you don't control, you, how do you control acceleration? Through a force. So the meaning of the control is in a force. Okay. Um, but to kind of look like our system, then you have to say, well, x1 is x and x2 is x prime. So the state variables. So x prime, x1 prime, which is x prime, is x2, 
and x2 prime, which is x double prime, is u. Okay? So that's always how you write a system, I mean, an equation, second order equation into a system of first order equations. So this would be F1, and this would be F2, right? So the, Hamilton, uh, the Hamiltonian is going to have what? It's going to be a function of two p's. And it's going to consist of, well, what is the, integra what is the thing to, to maximize, to minimize? Minimize the integral of u squared again. And physically, I don't know, the four squared integrity has sort of meaning, but um, minimizing u squared means try to make it as little as possible throughout the whole interval. Huh? Four squared? I don't know. Uh, so it, it may not be like the, the most physical objective to be achieved, but it's basically saying keep the force to a minimum throughout the whole duration, uh, such that draw such that you start, and this is the one of the clues. Sorry, it's kind of scattered, but um, such that you start with an initial condition and an initial velocity, and you end with zero. Uh, well, you bring it down to zero, but nothing about the velocity. Okay, so that basically says uh, so this is u squared, yep, yeah, plus p1 f1 x2 plus p2 u. Okay? So p prime, p1 prime minus x with uh, h with respect to x1, so that's 0. There's no x1 in h. p2 prime is minus h with respect to x2, so that's minus p1. Okay? So that's the system in p which is linear in P again, and there is only one boundary condition. P2, since, since X2 was not restricted, it's free at, at the terminal point, that is the velocity. We don't care how we get to zero, we just want to get to zero um, with the location, with the position. So P2 of 1 is, is 0, right? And of course, and X1 of 0 is, is given, X2 of 0 is given, and X1 at 1 is given. So I have four conditions, but they're not all initial conditions. There are three initial conditions, one terminal condition. So what I'd like you to focus is on, on setting up these things just like in anything else in this class, you've got to be able to set it up correctly. Once you set it up correctly, the, 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 of course, the tedious job is kind of solve, solve this system. Um, but having all the conditions, all the equations, it's, it's, uh, it's critical. And let me just, if I have, if I have derivative of P1 equals 0, that means what? P1 is a constant, right? Let's call that C. Well, I have P2 prime is negative P1. means P2 prime is minus CT plus a D, right? Hmm? 
ठीक है And now, do we carry both constants, or can we get rid of one? We have one condition that P2 has to satisfy. So we're going to be able to get rid of one. So P2 is 0 means, huh, it means 0 is minus C plus D, so C, D equals C. So I can go back to and say P2 is, so P1 is C and P2 is minus C, T plus C, right? Okay, now we take a deep breath and we say, what's next? To me it's always kind of this is a this is a, 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 a break point because it clarifies or it gives some meaning to what p's were. Those p's that we introduced in that h made no, made no sense, right? We had no clue what they were, but now we know what they are. So now we can go back to the Hamiltonian and say, well, we're not going to just plug them back in, but we know what p1 and p2 look like for each t. So now we're going to minimize with respect to u. And again, it's quadratic in u. Um, one thing that I'm, I, I want to say at this point you know, is no matter how complicated these things are, OK? And you have to keep it in mind. Sometimes it can be rather complicated. Solving for this, like writing explicitly, OK? You have to kind of. Understand that they, they, they do exist. It's a system of linear equations. So P's exist. They are solutions to this thing. Now, whether you can write them down, that's a skill that you may or may not have, right? May or may not gain in two days, in one day. Okay, but they exist. That's the P's, right? Now, you may actually have a lot of con con constants that you may not get rid of because you don't have, you know, you may not have any any boundary conditions for the p's. You may have all the boundary conditions for x's, right? So you may have a bunch of constants that you have to carry out, carry carry along. But whatever those p's are, they go back into the Hamiltonian, and you have to minimize u uh, with respect to u. Okay. Now, here's the thing. We so far we talked about unconstrained U. We said we don't have any constraints on admissible controls. But in situations like you have U as a force, you know, you may say I'm not allowing U to be a, you know outside of a certain range. Okay. What do you think is going to happen then when you have to minimize H? Well, you have to minimize a function of one variable in this case over a certain restricted region. So, you may, like if it's a quadratic, you may happen to have the minimum to be inside of the region, which is then admissible, so then you pick that as being your optimal. But what if it's like, if the, if the minimum of that parabola never, never enters, the, it's not a feasible not admissible, then where's the minimum of that h? At one of the endpoints. So that's going to be the difference that we're going to see when we talk about constraint optimal, I mean con control pro pro problems where the uh, optimal or the control is constraint. Okay, but here is, is again 2u plus p2 equals 0, right? To u plus p2 equals 0, so u, u equals minus 1 half p2, so it's minus ct plus c, so, and at this stage, 
make, make a point in actually labeling it, this is the optimal C, U. This is star. This is the U star. So this is because now you're writing you're writing a specific function, although we still don't know C, but we know this is how it's going to look like. Okay? The control. Then go back to uh, well, we have x1 and x2, so you go back to the system in x, which we didn't even write. x1 prime equals x2, x2 prime equals u. I mean, we wrote this earlier. And because we know u, we can find Okay? But there's going to be one more constant coming out of this guy. Right? And then x1 is going to be the integral of x2. So there's going to be a third constant coming out, right? And then you're going to have three constants, and you need to satisfy what? Three initial condition, two initial conditions, one final condition for x. So that's how you find those constants, right? And then again, have it on, a, have a computer uh, handy. What are you going to do? The best is when you have two variables to plot sort of x1 versus x2. Well, okay. The first you're going to plot the control, right? And the control is linear. Six, well, I'm just looking at the solution here, but the constant ends up being whatever it ends up being. So it's going to be six times, so u star is six times t minus one. So, I don't know, starts negative, actually stays negative again, negative six to zero. So that's like a breaking, but the x, x1 versus x2, so remember it starts position 1 and velocity 1, right? And you're trying to kind of drive it so that x1 is 0, and x2 ends up being equal to 1. So ends up looking like this. I mean, that's what the optimal ends up looking like, right? And again, this machinery gave you an unique, unique candidate for the optimal. Yeah? There was no things that were ambiguous, like we have three possible candidates, which one do we pick? Because it's unique and because of convexity, the answer is that's the optimal one, right? Okay. Any questions on this? We've done everything, almost everything, about the Pontragon's principle. Okay, Pontragon is very interesting uh, mathematician. He was blind all of his life, most of his life. Um, and he still had this nice pictures in his, in his head. I mean, there's a famous picture. Um, it's based on this dynamic program, pro programming um, ideas. And I'm not going to have time to, to uh, talk about it. Maybe I'll, I'll talk about it next time. But the only thing that uh, kind of you, you haven't seen is, what if controls are now restricted? And that's... I mean, the idea is to try to get to as practical as possible, okay? The practical pr optimal control problems that come out uh, from, you know, real, real situations, the control that you can apply has to be uh, constrained, okay? Then the, uh, here's the sort of the... Um, so, admissible controls 
are constrained. Now, let me clarify that this is not the only way you can constrain. You can constrain, uh, you can constrain the optimal control like with an integral constraint. You can say integral of u has to equal something. Uh, u is a force. I don't know. The energy spent has to be this much or less than or equal that much, right? So that's not the only. It's not. We're not just exhausting all the possibilities of constraining the optimal control. But if at each time you have, you are allowed to do a certain amount of you know of control, like like through this, then. The optimal control, U star, has to be chosen such that there exists a function P satisfying that P prime is minus partial of H with respect to X at X of T, U of T. Again, I'm going to skip the T dependence explicitly. And P of T, sorry, and P of T. With H of X, U, and P is the same one as before. So it's F, that's the integrand in the objective functional, plus P, well, P F of X, U, plus P little f of X, U. Okay? So that's time independent. So this is the Hamiltonian. And you know, possibly you have some terminal conditions for P, possibly, okay? With the same discussion. You may have them if you don't have enough for X. If you have the more you have for X, the fewer you have for P. But the, the key is that H of X U star and P is the minimum over all possible case, all the possible admissible controls of this H of X, V, and P for fixed T and hence X and P. Okay, what's, and, and what's this different than the one before? The difference is, and of course the last one is, well, x prime of t is f of x of t and u of t. x of 0 is 0. x0, zero, sorry. And x of t is xt. may or may not exist, may or may not be imposed, the terminal condition. Okay? So, again, what's the difference from the earlier situation? Well, here we still minimize the Hamiltonian over all admissible controls, but this minimum may not be achieved when the, when the partial of H with respect to U is zero. Because this guy may not be, may not have a minimum inside of that uh, k, inside of that, if just one dimensional, may not be. So, so possibility. So, so say uh, k is interval. You know, one dimensional. So u is scalar, right? So yeah, you have a scalar control. Then, h as a function of u may look like this. 
this is k, right? h may look like this, right? So then I have a minimum here. At partial of h with respect to u equals 0, right? But it may actually be or may actually be this. Then the minimum is at the endpoints. So what if k is, is, is like two-dimensional? If I have a control that has two components and I restrict it to say, I don't know, a, a unit disk, then the age may actually achieve its minimum inside or if not, it's going to achieve it on the boundary. Okay, so that's, that's basically what it, what it says. And the fact that this is done, this is again like the most kind of critical thing here, is for each fixed, you fix T and you minimize with respect to U that appears in the Hamiltonian. Or V, I mean, I don't know, it's, okay? What is this going to, uh, what, what are the what are complications that may appear here? So, for example, if I have so, let me say an example. What's your homework? Let's see. Homework is two four. Okay, let's let's just set up four really quick. Um, x double prime plus x prime plus x equals u. x of 0 is some constant. x prime of 0 is another constant. And u is, means that u is between negative 1 and 1. Well, that's an example. And it says, study the optimal control leading the system to rest in minimum time. OK, what does it mean system to rest? Kill the system. No. It basically says both the position and velocity is zero. Oh, just the velocity? I'm sorry, just the velocity. Yeah, bring it to rest. I'm sorry. Yeah, just the velocity. Sorry about that. So it's still useful. I mean, it's necessary to convert it to x1 versus x2. And I'll let you figure what the system will be. But all you do is you say, well, x1 is always x2. x, x1 prime is always x2. x2 prime is, is x double prime. So you put that on the other side. And can you do that? So again, this is x. You write this as x double prime as minus x minus x prime plus u. And we just said this is x and this is x prime. So, so wherever you see x, you put x1. Wherever you see x prime, you put x2. That's going to be the system. And the conditions are x uh what x1 of 0 is c0 x2 of 0 is c1 x1 of x2 of t is 0 okay all right now take a look even t is not specified. But what does it say about what is the objective? We haven't said what the objective is. Minimize t. Well, this is called a time optimal problem, which means minimize integral from 0 to t of 1. 
So it's no different than before, except capital F, the integrand, is 1. Okay? So we can set up really quick what the, um, well, we won't be able to, but because we don't, we don't know what uh, the equation for x2 is. But, but this is going to be 1 plus p1 x2 plus p2, and that is what you'll find out in the second equation, right? So this one is from the integrand of, you know, the time. The opt minimum time means minimizing that integral. Okay. Now, what do we see here already? After all, like you set up the system for p, you solve for p. Okay, let's just say we've done that. Okay. Independent of that you can say, well, let's minimize h with respect to u. Well, where is u appearing here? It's going to only appear in the parentheses. And it's not going to be u squared, it's not going to be, it's just going to be u. Right? I mean, that's going to be basically f, f2. So it's going to be u So to minimize h with respect to u, if you didn't have a restriction on u, you couldn't do that. Why? This is a linear in u. So how, how do linear functions look? They either look like this or I'm plotting h versus u for a fixed time, fixed everything. Of course, a line could also be horizontal. So who, who tells you the sign of, I mean the slope? Whether it's, so if it's like this, the minimum is achieved when u is negative 1. If u is like that, if h is like that, minimum is achieved when I'm sorry, it's not. This is only at that particular time t. Okay? So who's going to decide whether I go up or down? I mean, uh, negative 1 or 1? The slope, right? The slope of a linear uh, of a line is the coefficient of u. And I believe it comes with a plus here. So the sine of p2. So this is if P2, oops, P2 is positive, and this is if P2 is negative, okay? So whatever the P's looks like, if P2 is positive, U star is negative 1. If P2 is, 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 uh, is negative, U star is positive 1, okay? You write the system for P1, P2. And you solve it, OK? Maybe to simplify this problem, pick some, pick, pick a point. Pick your favorite point as the initial point. What's your favorite point in the plane? <laughs> Even zero zero probably works. Uh, no, because then you would have, you would be at zero, in zero time. That's the minimum time, right? So don't don't pick uh, don't pick uh, C one to be zero. Okay, pick C one not not zero. Okay. Just pick your numbers. So I don't have, you don't have those extra. So velocity. One one, yeah. Pick one one. And the question is, how can you drive this through this? Which, by the way, that's just like a spring. 
with a uh, friction. Okay, so that's a spring with a friction, and with an external force that's between negative one and one. Right? How can you drive it to rest? I almost think, uh, uh, yeah, you have to you have to uh, say x equals zero as well. No, no, no. Just x, x prime is equal to zero. That would be a different, a slightly different problem. Um, okay, so just pick one and one, and solve the system for p, right? And see where is x, where, where is that p going to change sign from positive to negative or from negative to positive? That's when you have to switch the control from being negative one to one or from being one to negative one. Then, what do you do uh, to find x? You plug in u equals either 1 or negative 1. So you have to, have to solve basically two systems. One system with u equals 1, one system with u equals negative 1. Final step would be to... Um, So you would actually get, you have an example here, which is very similar, 6.8. It's almost like an identi identical. Yeah, you see, the, okay, so it's, it, it says the system to rest is x1 and x2 equal to 0. Okay, so let's, let's make that uh, convention. When, when it says at rest, so you want to bring this to, to rest, meaning... Okay, so x1 is x is t is 0 and x2 is 0. Okay? Think about a spring. I mean, you bring it, if you, if you bring it to velocity 0, but it's not like at, at, at displacement 0, then it's going to, the moment you take off, it's going to go, it's not going to be at rest. To be at rest, you have to be 0 displacement, 0 velocity. That's going to simplify this a little bit. Okay? So you have that example, and basically what you get at the end is two pictures. One is for u equals 1, one is for u equals negative 1. Okay. And next time I'll show you how to actually superpose the, the two pictures to kind of get the answer. But right now, I mean, it gets just because the, the answer is going to be sort of a, you have to use scissors and paper cut the, you know and just make this picture from these two pictures okay don't don't do it on this on the book but you can make a copy and uh, I'll tell you how to use this I mean the scissors is going to be going to be used where the p2 is going to be zero that's when it's switching the sign from positive to negative um, those are the two problems let's see what do I need I don't Say it again. 10 and 12. 10, and 12. Ten is for grad students. Um, <laughs> um, I wanted to set it up, get the um, <coughs> Hamiltonian, get the system for P, and get the uh, uh, minimize. How to how to minimize? How to find the object the min optimal uh, U? Okay. If you can do any further than that, that's, you know, I'll take that for extra credit. Um, number 12, that's for everybody. Same thing. Well, here the questions are a little bit more specific. Show why the optimal strategy has to be 0 and 1. So you have to basically do this. Say why, you know, the Hamilton is going to be either like this or this. So, is you know... Um, Write the Hamilton and figure out sign of what quantity decides whether u is 0 or u is 1. That's going to be the coefficient of u. And part 2, don't worry about it because that's the Caesar stuff. So I'll show you the part 2 and uh, 
on Friday. Okay. And Friday, uh, I'll give you the final exam. Okay. And um, I also have those FCQs of evaluations. Uh, so I have to finish a little bit early. Um, and let's see, any questions? I mean, the exam is going to be due Monday, midnight? No? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a, maybe 5 p.m., but I'll, I'll see if the labs are open over the weekend. If they're not open, maybe I'll give you till Tuesday or something. Over the weekend? Over the weekend? The building is open over the weekend? I'll check. Okay, then I'll leave it on Monday. It was open over the break. Okay. I'll leave it for Monday, uh, due Monday, 5 p.m., for instance, and um, okay, and we'll talk more on, on, on Friday. But um, I'm sorry, I keep it. But um, the only thing that I, we haven't done is kind of justify why we do the minimization this way. Why is this principle the way it is? Um, I can spend like 15 minutes, go over that uh, on Friday. Um, it's based on this value function in the dynamic programming. So that's why dynamic programming is sort of the way it is. I mean, uh, that's why it's important. And, and besides, it's practical implications for discrete uh, optimization. But in continuous optimization, it's justifying why, you know, why you do this thing. Why do you minimize? Why the optimal is minimizing the Hamiltonian and each time frozen time t minimized just with respect to u. So that's that's a that's a uh, you know that's a constraint optimization in R n. You know sometimes you can do it by hand. You, it's not always the Hamiltonian is going to be linear. Sometimes is is the the optimal control can have five variables, right? And so you're going to have a constrained optimization problem in five dimensions, and the constraint may be a simplex, you know, so you're going to do some sort of a numerical optimization to, to get the optimal U at each time T. So that's kind of, it's a headache. So I don't plan to do um, numerical approximation for this. Uh, there are some questions here. If you're interested, feel free. That's, you know, that would be sort of something we could have done if we had more time. Uh, where you discretize this optimal control problem and you get the nice dots and aligned and, you know, approximating the optimal control solution. But unfortunately, we don't have time, so we have to do this by hand as, as much as we can.